Hello and welcome to part six of the Cisco Catalyst Center plug and play discovery demo series. In this demo, we're going to be using the plug and play connect method for discovering our Catalyst Center server. Now this method is available as a cloud hosted portal to all customers free of charge, but it does require some additional setup. There are two main steps here in getting the plug and play portal uh, connection to work for you. The first step is that it still requires a DHCP lease so you have to have a dynamic IP address assigned to a device. It must also contain a DNS server IP address in that lease, and the device must be able to reach the internet. In step two, the router or switch will perform a lookup of a hard-coded uh, DNS host name of devicehelper.cisco.com. In order for this process to work once that connection has been made, customers must have a Cisco smart account created and in their smart account inventory, this particular device has to be in the inventory. So it has to be identified in there, either manually or it could be added at the time of purchase. And finally, there has to be a controller profile created in their smart account that gives information to the onboarding device as to how to redirect and connect to the local controller server, which would be Catalyst Center. In that case, when all these things line up, the device will redirect to its local Catalyst Center server and establish a secure connection to it there. So first, let's take a look at our topology, and it has changed a little bit from our previous demos. Uh, in this case, we're using a totally different VLAN, even though we're starting with the same switch that we've been using in all of our previous videos. And this particular VLAN that we'll be using actually has internet access through a NAT translation on a router in my lab. And the reason we're doing this is because the lab network that I have for all these demonstrations is private and not routed, so it doesn't typically have internet access without some kind of a NAT translation. So we'll be using this same Catalyst 9500 switch that we've used in our previous videos. And again, we're going to be uh, using an in-band management VLAN. So in this case, we're going to be using the PNP startup command, but we're going to be telling it to use VLAN 198, which is a special VLAN that I've set up in my network where I have NAT translation. Uh, additionally, the VLAN 198 uh, gateway, or its SVI, exists on this ISR 4451 router near the top of our topology. So this becomes the gateway for that VLAN uh, and also the DHCP server. But importantly, in our DHCP config, we do not have option 43, and we're not providing a local network domain name. All we're providing is IPs and a DNS server that can resolve um, DNS records that are internet-based, so not just internal DNS records. And this is important because the device has to be able to reach the internet, and it has to be able to resolve the DNS hostname of devicehelper.cisco.com. One last item that's necessary is that for this to work, customers have to have a Cisco smart account, which again is free to any customer. But you must have a smart account set up, and that smart account must have a controller uh, profile created for Catalyst Center with the information about the, the local IP or local DNS host name of that controller. And the device that's being onboarded has to exist in the inventory in that smart account. And you can either add a device manually, or it could be added automatically when you order it from Cisco. So again, we're going to be using our same Catalyst Center server. Uh, however, in this case, we're not going to be connecting to the internal 172 address, but we'll be using our uh, greater lab uh, IP address of 10.83.114.133. That exists on a network in uh, our lab environment that has internet access, and that's why we're providing that to get into that outer lab and have internet access. So let's talk a little bit about the workflow for Plug and Play Connect. So initially, the Plug and Play agent uh, will start up and it will fall back to this last option of trying to resolve the record of uh, devicehelper.cisco.com. If it can resolve that DNS uh, host name to an IP address, then it's going to make an attempt to connect to the plug and play portal, which is hosted on the internet, and it will connect over HTTPS. If that connection is successful, the device will identify itself to the plug and play connect portal. Uh, by providing its serial number, like its chassis serial number. And in some cases with some hardware, there will also be a SUDI certificate serial number that it will provide as well. And the SUDI certificate is a uh, hardware certificate that's put on a chip that's physically on the device itself. 
This usually applies to SD-WAN routers and not necessarily catalyst switches. So for our lab in particular, there really is no cert uh, SUDI certificate serial number that we have to provide. So the next thing that will happen is the plug and play connect database will be checked to see if there is a customer smart account uh, that exists, which has in its inventory this particular device with its serial number. If that device can be found in a customer smart account uh, somewhere in the inventory, then it will check to see if there is a controller profile that's valid uh, for this particular device. And if there is a controller profile, that will contain the local connection information for how to reach the local uh, controller within your network. So if all that is found, the next step is that information will be sent back to the plug and play agent on the switch, and it will tell it what local IP address to connect to uh, to reach its plug and play server. And at that point, the device gets redirected to the controller and the typical day zero onboarding process starts for the plug and play discovery. So let's go over and take a look at our lab. Um, I have a little bit of a config snippet here just to reiterate what's uh, going on in this lab setup. So we have a, uh, a NAT VLAN DHCP pool that's handing out 198.18 addresses. Uh, and we do have some DNS servers that uh, are able to resolve public records. And this is on the ISR router in our lab. Uh, the router has a sub interface uh, for VLAN 198, and it is the gateway at 198.18.0.1, uh, and it's providing NAT translation. Now on the upstream 9300 switch that this uh, 9500 switch is connected to, we're using that PNP startup VLAN 198 command uh, at the global level. If we go over to our Catalyst Center here, um, I'll have to uh, delete the device because it's once again discovered Catalyst Center. So we'll delete it out of our plug and play uh, inventory here. And let's take one other look here at the smart account uh, where we are setting this up. So uh, in this example smart account that I have, I have created a controller profile and done this by clicking the add profile name and simply provided it with some connection information for the Catalyst Center server. Now there are options for uh, providing an IP or a DNS host name. In this case, I chose to provide an IP version 4 address and the protocol of HTTP over port 80. Uh, we can choose HTTPS, however, if we do that, we have to upload the certificate from Catalyst Center as well, so that can be provided back to the device. So that's our controller profile. That will be the information that gets sent back to the PNP agent. In our inventory of devices, we can see we've only got one device here, which is our Catalyst 9500 switch. And we've provided the serial number for the device uh, as the identifying information. And you can see the current status is pending redirection. So now, if we go over to our switch and reconnect to it, we can enter the command PNPA service reset and we'll say yes and this will begin the process of factory defaulting the device after which it will reboot uh, and then we will see it come up and attempt to connect to the plug and play portal so while we're waiting for this to complete uh, we will fast forward through this okay at this point you can see that our redirection is successful uh, in the messages we saw going back and forth here, we could see that we connected via HTTPS to devicehelper.cisco.com, and it provided a uh, plug and play connect profile, which was installed on the device, telling us what the IP address of our uh, plug and play server is and what port to communicate with it on. So initially we uh, made that connection over port 80, and then um, once we downloaded the certificate from the Catalyst Center server, we made the uh, reconnection over port 443 using HTTPS. So if we take a look at our Catalyst Center server, you'll see that the switch has shown up in here. Um, you can see its serial number is there, and also this is the NAT IP address that we're using to communicate with uh, the 133 IP of our Catalyst Center server. And also, if we go over to our smart account and we refresh this page, what we should see is uh, the status of the device changing to redirect successful. And if we look at the log entries here, we'll actually see uh, where the device was added and it had a successful secure connection and it was successfully authenticated and then sent the redirection information uh, successfully back to the device itself. And that resulted in 
the device finding out where to find its local controller. So that's all there is to the process. Um, there is quite a bit of additional detail and setup for the smart account um, and other settings like that that need to be considered. But again, that's kind of outside the scope of this training uh, since we're just demonstrating how it works. We'll provide a link to the actual documentation for the Plug and Play Connect portal uh, in this video uh, description so you can go and check that out on your own. But that concludes our demo here. Thanks for watching.